uh, as we get ready to start. Uh, and as we stated, we are in Genesis 47. And um, uh, this family has come together. So uh, what family are we talking about? We're talking about the family of, of Jacob. All right. So uh, just a quick uh, uh, backdrop. Uh, Jacob had 12 sons. All right. And he had 12 sons by, by how many different women? Four. All right. Two, two women were his what? His wives. And two were concubines. All right. So right off the bat, we know this. That's a family that's already got some built-in what? Problems. Problems. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got some issues right there. All right. And so uh, there was strife going on between the, the, the actual two wives because Jacob wanted to marry Rachel, but he got tricked by his, uh, by his uh, father-in-law. And instead of him getting Rachel on his wet night, he got Leah. Leah. Mm-hmm. All right? And so, well, and Leah wasn't as attractive as Rachel. They said that, you know, so there was something about well, she being hard on the eyes. Mm-hmm. Well, then uh, his uncle told him, well, if you work seven more years, I'll give you Rachel. And he did that. So right off the bat, you got some problems. Now, when they're married, Rachel couldn't have children. Leah was popping out kids left and right. Next thing you know, she doesn't have four children. So Rachel decided, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my handmaid, and I'm going to give my handmaid to Jacob, and then my handmaid can have children, and they'll be mine as a segregate children. And so she did that, and then she started having children. And then when Leah found out that she was doing that, she said, well, I'm going to do the same thing. This is going on where? What are we talking about? Family. family. This is family. This ain't enemies. <laughs> This ain't the one that hates you. This is family. So there's he, now so now you got four women involved with Jacob. And then they argue and fussing. And then Rachel comes to Jacob and says, give me children or I'll die. And Jacob says, well, who am I? Am I God? I can't you know, make that happen. If you're going to bear, it's going to be something to the Lord. Well, uh, the, the uh, concubine women, they have children. And then finally, Rachel has children. She has Joseph. And you can imagine that uh, Jacob now having a son by the woman whom he truly loved, who he wanted to be his first and only wife in the very beginning, has now had a son. And Jacob loved that son. And actually, it wasn't even a secret that he loved that son more than the what? Than the other children. Is that a problem? That's a problem, isn't it? And so, and then even in that statement that Rachel said, you know, give me children or I die. Well, she got pregnant again and she had one more child and that was Benjamin. But when she had Benjamin, what happened? She died. She died in childbirth. Mm -hmm. Tragedies happens in families, don't it? Mm -hmm. Unexpected stuff. So now Jacob is going and, uh, you know, we, we... Remember reading when he had to, he finally, he wanted to leave Laban. That was the one that was hiring him because he was treating him bad. Laban was his uncle. And his uncle was the one that tricked him in, in marrying the wrong wife and then uh, kind of uh, manipulated him to stay there extra years to work for him to help build up his finances. Jacob finally leaves. But when he leaves, he's leaving Laban, but he's also getting ready to head down towards who? Esau. Because we can go back to another story about the family, <laughs> about Isaac, about the trickery that he did by taking his, his brother's uh, birthright, Esau. But we won't go that deep into it. And so now they go into the land and they're there. And then the brothers are out and Jacob tells Joseph, go see how your other brothers are doing. And he sends them out there. The brothers are upset with Joseph because Joseph had this dream. And in the dream, it, the dream was interpreted that the brothers and the father and the mother would bow down to Joseph. And they brothers, did, they didn't like that. So the brothers did what? They hated Joseph. And so when they saw Joseph coming, Jacob sent them down there to check on him. They did what? Let's kill this guy. And let's see what was going to become of his dreams. And that's something. If God gives you a dream, you think that man can kill it? No. Not going to happen. And so, but the brothers tried to do that. And they, they sold him to the Midianites and the Ishmaelites. And then brought, took his coat, ripped it in some shreds, dipped it in some goat's blood, and brought it back to Jacob and said, hey, you know, we found this. What do you think happened? And he goes, oh, my goodness. Uh, Joseph has been torn apart by a wild beast. 
And that's what was in his mind. Mm -hmm. My son is what? Dead. Dead. All right. So then they go along. Joseph is now in, sold from the, by the Ishmaelites and the Midianites to the Egyptians. In Potiphar's house, Potiphar sees he's got the gift of administration, puts him over in yeah, his entire house. But then the wife also looks at him and says, well, uh, you know, I want to be with him and tries to seduce him. And Joseph like, I can't do this. I'm, the, you know, your husband has put me in charge of everything. Why would I do that to him? Mm -hmm. Well, then she tries to do what? Trick him. Trick him. Mm -hmm. And grabbed his coat and then lied on him and said, well, when he ran away, when she tried to force herself on him and he ran, she screamed out and, and hollered, well, he came in here uh, you know, on, upon me and told the husband and the husband had, him, had Joseph thrown where? In jail. In jail. And I always say that I believe that the, 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 the um, uh, Potiphar knew what was going on because normally if that was to happen, and he believed that he more than likely would have had Joseph what? Killed. Killed. Put to death. Mm -hmm. But down in the jail, he's there, and once again, the head jailer recognizes that this guy has a gift. He got a gift of administration. He seems to know how to get things going. And he puts him in, in charge. But then when he's down there, the king... Puts two people in jail, uh, the butler and the baker, and uh, they have a dream. Now you see the hand of God because the very thing that started this with Joseph was that Joseph initially had a dream. So now two people around Joseph have a dream. Joseph <coughs> interprets the dream, tells them what's going to happen, tells the baker you're going to be put to death, tells the butler you're going back to your job. Mm -hmm. And so that happens, but he says when you go there, tell the king, tell Pharaoh about my injustice down here. You want to plead your court. You want to bring a, a legal proceedings about you being unjustly imprisoned. You ever hear about that before? Mm -hmm. But guess what? When the butler gets up there, he forgets all about it. <coughs> but in two years, Pharaoh has a dream. And that's the thing about God's timing. We got three dreams here. Who has the first dream? Joseph. Mm -hmm. Then the butler and the baker have a dream. And then Pharaoh. Each one of those dreams was stages in Joseph's life that God was speaking to him and allowing him to know, I'm with you. And when we read the narrative, when Joseph was thrown in the dungeon because he was lied, about, lied, by, lied on by Pharaoh's wife, the, the narrative says that he was thrown in the dungeon, but God was with yeah. Joseph. Excuse me. And those are the words that when I read that, and I've read it before, but you know, but sometimes when you read something and you read it again and you're like, wait a minute, you know, I didn't really absorb the impact of that. When you got lied on and was thrown in, in the dungeon, it says God was with you. So wait a minute, things that you don't want to happen to you, that you, we would consider as a whole, this is not a good thing. But yet God in his infinite wisdom says, nope, that's exactly what I need to happen. And when you go through that, I'm going to be with you. That's a portion of that that sometimes I think we have to learn. All right? Because we, we, who wants to volunteer to go through the suffering? Who wants, who's going to be first in line? <clears throat> I'm going to be sitting right here. <laughs> I'm not getting in that line. I don't want to. But then oftentimes we forget what God does to people when they go through that. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, I, I did a, uh, uh, an illustration. This is based off the Hebrew boys. But you, you look at a piece of paper and you put fire all around it. Eventually, what's going to happen to that paper? It's going to catch on fire. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be turned into just ash. So if, let's say, you are that paper. What are you pray what are you praying for? What's your prayer? Not to burn. Not to burn. Not to be consumed. Not to be consumed. Right. Sometimes we pray to put the fire out. out. Mm -hmm. right. But how many times do we remember to pray? Change me. Turn me from paper to granite. Turn me from paper to steel. Change me. Turn me into something that the fire cannot what? Consume. Can't hurt. It can't consume. Can you change me? 
And maybe I need to be in this situation because I'm the one that needs to change. I'm the one that needs to do something different. I'm the one that needs the improvement. And so when you think about the Hebrew boys, when they were in that fire, the fire was hot because the people that threw them in got consumed. Mm -hmm. But when they came out, they didn't have the smell of smoke on them, nor were they burnt. So something about them must have changed because the fire was actually still what? Hot. Still hot. Mm -hmm. And so we look at Joseph's situation, and, we, and, and did Joseph change? Yes, he did. He became a person that learned to trust in God in the midst of what? Trouble. All kinds of trouble. And he watched God move him up to second in command. Because when Pharaoh had his dream, nobody could interpret it. All his uh, um, soothsayers and magicians, you know, his so-called spiritual people. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of spiritual people around today, right? You see them on TV and, you know, they're selling books. You go to Christian bookstores, you know, they got all that stuff. But you got to be careful with all of that. Um, and then the next thing we know, um, he's second in, in, in command, and then he's interpreting Pharaoh's dream, and he's telling Pharaoh that you're going to have seven years of famine, and, I mean seven years of plenty, and then seven years of famine, and this is what you need to do. So he begins to, to tell him, this is how you should administrate this, because he has the gift of what? Administration. And Pharaoh said, well, who else should I put in power to, to run this but you? And so now, boom, here's his job. Now, when it's all said and done, how would Joseph have ever have gotten that particular position if he had to stay in Canaan, if his brothers didn't sell him? How would he have gotten that job if he wasn't lied on by Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's wife and thrown in the dungeon at the same time that Pharaoh threw some people in the dungeon? Right? So we start looking and when we go kicking and screaming through our troubles, I know I do, complaining about God, you know, can we fix this? And we forget that God says, I'm with you. I'm making this work. And we oftentimes get anxious and frustrated and angry and mad and, 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 uh, and, and upset. But God is trying to let us know, do you believe what I said in Scripture? Lo, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Do you believe that? And if you believe that, what, how do you then act? Now, I'm saying this, and you're probably saying, wow, Wayne, you're saying this, and you know this. How long have you been doing that successfully? Okay, well, I'll let you know when I started. <laughs> <laughs> I do it off and on. I'm better. But when you read it and you look at it, you go, this is, this, that's my target. That's what I got to get to. I got to stop being so frustrated when things seem to not go the way I think they should go. And trust that God knows what? What he's doing. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. A lot of people will do something whack too and be like, well, I got sold in slavery, so I'm going to bang this man's wife. Screw it. God don't care about mm -hmm. me. I'm going to be mm -hmm. whack anyway. That's a good point. And they'll just dig their own hole deeper. That's it. We get, we get mad and we listen to the whispers of the enemy. Because mm -hmm. that's, that's where that comes from. You think God cares for you? Look at what, what he allowed to happen to you. So let's go ahead and just do this. Yeah, it don't matter. It don't matter. I, I don't, exactly. And that's not the right way to go. But so we have to what, learn to do what? Trust. In whatever state I am in. What did Paul say? Be there with what? Content. Content. All right. And that's what Joseph learned. All right, and so we see the family. And so then, then we find that, uh, you know, the brothers come up there because the famine's happened. They're looking for food. And there's a whole story. I won't rehash all of that. But when it's all said and done, they begin to recognize it. And Joseph reveals to them, you guys have been coming back and forth here looking for some food, coming to me. And, you know, and we had all these scenarios of ups and downs and, and, and different things. But guess what? I'm Joseph. And they can't believe it. And they're like afraid and astonished and glad all at the same time. And then he said, now go back and tell my dad. Go back and tell Jacob that I'm still alive. Because in Jacob's mind, Joseph is what? Dead. Dead. He's dead. So Joseph, as far as Jacob is concerned, Joseph was resurrected. Because in his mind and in his spirit, my son was dead. Right. And now here's the resurrection in his mind. Mm -hmm. all right? Because he, knew he, he all along, he, he, he realized, okay, he wasn't dead. 
And so now the union happens and they're coming back together. And that's kind of like where we are. And I took time to kind of bring that uh, together because this story kind of picks up right there. Uh, and and uh, so if you don't get the backdrop, you don't understand the excitement, the thrill, the joy, you know, that, that we're going to actually experience here in this chapter. So let's take a listen to Genesis chapter 47. Chapter 47. Then Joseph came and told Pharaoh and said, My father and my brethren and their flocks and their herds and all that they have are come out of the land of Canaan. And behold, they are in the land of Goshen. And he took some of his brethren, even five men, and presented them unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto his brethren, What is your occupation? And they said unto Pharaoh, Thy servants are shepherds, both we and also our fathers. They said moreover unto Pharaoh, For to sojourn in the land are we come, for thy servants have no pasture for their flocks, for the famine is sore in the land of Canaan. Now therefore we pray thee, let thy servants dwell in the land of Goshen. And Pharaoh spake unto Joseph, saying, Thy father and thy brethren are come unto thee. The land of Egypt is before thee. In the best of the land make thy father and brethren to dwell. In the land of Goshen let them dwell. And if thou knowest any men of activity among them, then make them rulers over my cattle. And Joseph brought in Jacob his father and set him before Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Jacob, How old art thou? And Jacob said unto Pharaoh, The days of the years of my pilgrimage are an hundred and thirty years. Few and evil have the days of the years of my life been, and have not attained unto the days of the years of the life of my fathers in the days of their pilgrimage. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from before Pharaoh. And Joseph placed his father and his brethren and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt, in the best of the land, in the land of Ramses, as Pharaoh had commanded. And Joseph nourished his father and his brethren and all his father's household with bread according to their families. And there was no bread in all the land, for the famine was very sore, so that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the corn which they bought. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. And when money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence? For the money faileth. And Joseph said, Give your cattle, and I will give you for your cattle if money fail. And they brought their cattle unto Joseph. And Joseph gave them bread in exchange for horses, and for the flocks, and for the cattle of the herds, and for the asses, and he fed them with bread for all their cattle for that year. When that year was ended, they came unto him the second year, and said unto him, We will not hide it from my Lord, how that our money is spent. My Lord also hath our herds of cattle. There is not aught left in the sight of my Lord, but our bodies and our lands. Wherefore shall we die before thine eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land for bread, and we and our land will be servants unto Pharaoh. And give us seed, that we may live and not die, that the land be not desolate. And Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh, for the Egyptians sold every man his field, because the famine prevailed over them. So the land became Pharaoh's. And as for the people, he removed them to cities from one end of the borders of Egypt, even to the other end thereof. Only the land of the priests bought he not, for the priests had a portion assigned them of Pharaoh, and did eat their portion which Pharaoh gave them, wherefore they sold not their lands. Then Joseph said unto the people, Behold, I have bought you this day and your land for Pharaoh. Lo, here is seed for you, and ye shall sow the land. And it shall come to pass in the increase that ye shall give the fifth part unto Pharaoh, and four parts shall be your own, for seed of the field, and for your food, and for them of your households, and for food for your little ones. And they said, Thou hast saved our lives. Let us find grace in the sight of my Lord, and we will be Pharaoh's servants. And Joseph made it a law over the land of Egypt unto this day, that Pharaoh should have the fifth part, except the land of the priests only, which became not Pharaoh's. And Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt in the country of Goshen, and they had possessions therein, and grew, and multiplied exceedingly. 
And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt seventeen years, so the whole age of Jacob was an hundred forty and seven years. And the time drew nigh that Israel must die. And he called his son Joseph, and said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and deal kindly and truly with me. Bury me not, I pray thee, in Egypt. But I will lie with my fathers, and thou shalt carry me out of Egypt, and bury me in their burying place. And he said, I will do as thou hast said. And he said, Swear unto me. And he swore unto him. And Israel bowed himself upon the bed's head. Alright. So, we see this situation. And you can see, <clears throat> this, this story picks up with um, some adjustments and things that are going on. Um, but based upon what we've already talked about in my, in, in my introduction, uh, so we understand why there's so much, uh, uh, in the beginning, uh, joy and amazement and like, wow, and just the, the, the feeling of giving and, and just, oh, yes, take the best land and do this. And, and that's the way things oftentimes start out, you know. Young couples, they get married and it's like, oh, she's so beautiful. Oh, he's so handsome. Oh, this is this. Oh, we're going to do this. Oh, I, everything is so good. The compromise, they're wonderful and everything. And then after years come through, different things happen. Some kids are born. All of a sudden, it's like, okay, I'm too tired. I'm too, I'm too you know, this. Don't be bothering me with that. Why are you doing this? <laughs> All that starts kicking in. <laughs> All right? And so that's, that's exactly what we're going to see here. We see the honeymoon period. And then we see the problems coming in. Because keep in mind, what land are they into, going into? Egypt. 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 Is Egypt going to be the place of eternal blessings? No. 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 That's not the place. Egypt is a type of what? Sin. 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 So, um, when we get into the next uh, book, you're gonna, we're going to see a man that Paul talked about. Where he said, and the man is Moses, he said he'd rather suffer with the children of Israel than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. So Egypt has some good times. Egypt has some things that you can rejoice about mm -hmm. temporarily. But it's not going to be a long time. It's not going to be everlasting. It's going to be what? Fading. Fading. All right? So we see here, and I'm going to try. This is a, 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 you know, 31 verses. And I'm going to try to get all 31 verses in in 30 minutes. We have time. We got time? All right. I'm, that's the clock keep over there. He said we got time. Don't worry about the clock. All right. We got time. So it says, when, when Joseph came and told Pharaoh and said, my father and my brethren and, and their flocks and their herds have all come uh, and they are here and they've come out of the land of Canaan. All right. The land of Canaan was the land that was promised to who? The Canaanites, right? No, Abraham. 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 All right. So they're leaving the what? Promised Abraham. land. And going into what? Sin. Going into Egypt, into, into something that's a type of sin. Mm. Alright? So, once again, let's, let's phrase that. God, why would you take me from the land of promise and bring me into a land that is typified by what? Sin. sin. sin yeah. For what purpose? Why? And yet... <laughs> I'll say this again. How many times do we do the same thing? <laughs> okay. Why? Lord, I, my, my car was working. Now it's not. Uh, my, I, I, I used, uh, last year, I paid all my bills. This year, I'm struggling. Mm -hmm. Last year, I, I, I had good health. This year, my health is questionable. Mm -hmm. Last year, me and my wife and the children got along. This year, we're at each other's throat. Why? Why does that happen? And you say, okay, well, wait and tell me. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know. <laughs> That's what God does. And so what did the scripture tell us? That 
without faith, it's what? Impossible, impossible to please God. God. And that's one of those verses that I have to keep saying to myself because I got to always remember to have faith in God. Should I have faith in him when things are good? Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Should I have faith in him when things are bad? Yes. yes. All right. But then how do we normally do that? When things are good, we talk about how wonderful God is. Mm-hmm. When things are bad, we ain't saying a whole lot. Mm-hmm. We're not God's cheerleader as often as we are when things are good. All right. But sometimes you do. God will move you from Canaan land to the land of Egypt. Your situations will change. But what do we know? And here's the secret. I'm not, I'm not going to say secret, but here's the, here's, the, the, here's the foundational thought. And that is, God is still what? With you. Exactly. All right, so they moved from, from the Canaan land to, uh, to Egypt. And it says, and behold, uh, there are, there's a land of Goshen. Now, here's something that's interesting. Um, in the midst of Egypt, there is a place where God says, even though this ain't the promised land, and this ain't where my spirit works uh, to fulfill all that I promised you, that's going to happen in the promised land. But there is a, a segment, a, a, a bubble where I will, my presence will be. We're going to see that in our next few books because God's going to tell the children of Israel to make what's called the Ark of the Covenant and God says that I will dwell where? In that. Amen. Okay? And my presence will be there. This land of, Gosh- of Goshen is a place where they're going to be and as we see in our next stories that the Lord's going to, going to actually uh, use that place as a portion where he will sanctify that spot. So when some of the plagues hit that we're going to see in our next book, this land is going to be protected from. Well, we'll get to that, but I just wanted to, you know, kind of let you see that this land that they're going into, God knows where they're going, and he's going to make that place in the midst of Egypt a special place. So what does that tell us? That you, God, is you. God is with you. So you got your house that's in this world, in this nation, under this administration, that, that is ruled by the prince and power of the air. Mm-hmm. But if you invite God into what? Your heart and into your house, your house can be a Goshen. That's right. Your house can be a place where God's presence can dwell even in the midst of Egypt. Amen. And so that's something that you have to work out. You know, and so the husband and the wife and the children come together and go, well, we're going to always invite God into our house even though this ain't our permanent, what, dwelling. Oh. All right. So it says, uh, and he took some of his brethren and, and, and even uh, five men. So he took a few of the brethren. <clears throat> he didn't take all of them. And they presented themselves to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto his brethren, what is your occupation? And they said unto Pharaoh, thy servants are shepherds. The Lord is my shepherd. shepherd. I shall not want. Yeah. I find that just very typical. I could spend a lot of time on that. But I think you get the point, right? It's kind of like a nice little play on words there. Both we and our fathers. Uh, and they said, Moreover unto Pharaoh, uh, for to sojourn, to sojourn in the land have we come. I like that word. They didn't say to what? Stay. Stay. Mm-hmm. All right. So we're living in this world of sin. All right. Are we here to stay? No. We are moving what? Through. Through. We are so sojourning. We are on our way to another place. But while we're on our way to another place, we still have to dwell where? Here. Just to stop over. Just a stopover. That's it. I don't know if y'all remember. I don't know if y'all remember the, back in the days we used to ride the, the trailways and the, and the Greyhound bus. And they had that little stopover. And go, okay, we're going to stop here. You can get something to eat. You can go shop. But, it, but in two hours, you, 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 you better be back. They say if you want to get there fast, get on what other bus? The trail. Peter Pan one. <laughs> Peter Pan. <laughs> 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 I remember the Peter Pan bus. All right, and it says, "For for thy servants have no pasture uh, for their flocks, for the famine was sore in the land of Canaan." Okay, and and, and I and I I read that and I think, wow, in the promised land there was a what famine, famine. Right? but you know, so the Lord allowed them to leave, 
And, and you look at that, and, and once again, you go, wow. Sometimes I know that's where God wants me to be, but I can't be there, what, right now. Now, theref- uh, therefore, we pray, the, uh, let thy servants dwell in the land of Goshen. And Pharaoh spake unto Joseph, saying, Thy father and thy brethren are come unto thee, and the land of Egypt is before thee. And the best of the land, make thy father and thy brothers to dwell in the land of Gershon and, and let them uh, dwell. So right now, everybody's like, oh, sure, go to that land. This is wonderful. This is the honeymoon period, right? Pharaoh and all the people are just getting along. If that's what you want, you take it. No big deal. Everybody's happy. Everybody's got joy just oozing out of them. They're just excited, right? Mm-hmm. And God, it, those are good times, aren't they? You can look back and can just remember, man, when you had those good days and, you know, you had that, that, you know, when you got that job that you was hoping to get and you got there, you got that first paycheck, you know, when different things happened, you got that car, you got that house, you know, when the, when the uh, first child and second child was born, all that just joy, right? Mm. All right. But keep on living. <laughs> <laughs> and so it says, go uh, and, and dwell. And if thou uh, knoweth any men of uh, activity among them that make and make them ruler over my cattle. So basically, Pharaoh's saying, and when you go there, I got cattle too, and we're not that good at doing, you know, shepherding and herding and stuff. I'll pay you to take care of. My. So now they got a place to stay. They got a new job. job. <laughs> and man, I mean, this is happy days are here again, man. <laughs> this is great. And Joseph brought Jacob, the, his father, and set him before Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. Yeah, you hear that? Mm-hmm. Jacob blessed who? Blessed Pharaoh. Bless Pharaoh. So God always puts his man to whom he puts his spirit in above the man who he put as king. Amen. So if Trump was to come in here, don't let Trump bless you. You bless him. Amen. Come on in, Donald. Come. And some, some of y'all, some of y'all, I can, I can read in your mind. Some of y'all, be like, I ain't blessing that man. <laughs> no, I think it hit me no, like some clothes. I'm blessing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, uh, <laughs> but remember, as, as me in the house of the Lord, you gotta bless. That's you got right. No choice. That's right. As people of God, don't push you got no choice. As people of God, y'all have to pray for the government. Amen. That's your it's responsibility. That's what it says. It's exactly. It's we have to pray for our administrative leaders. Mm-hmm. God wants you, as a person who knows Him, to play to pray for people that are in power that may not know Him. Right. Okay. <laughs> and keep your hand out the cookie jar. That's what you better do. Because that's what happens. You know, they, they get up in there and they get manipulated, and then the the wrong instead of you blessing them, you start looking for them to what bless to bless you. you. Yeah. What kind of kickback can I get? And that's the problem. So, so sometimes we, we go backwards with that. But the, the man of God should always bless the administration. And Pharaoh said unto Jacob, How old art thou? And Jacob said unto Pharaoh, The days of my years and my pilgrimage are 130 years. So it's 130 years old. And, and, and look, at, look at how he views them. And few and evil have the days of my years of my life been. Why is he saying this? Why is he saying few and evil? Well, we know why he's saying few because the older patriarchs lived lived what longer? They lived longer. All right, but why why evil? Because because he was the way he was treated. Mm-hmm. Well, he had that problem with Esau, mm-hmm. right? Then um, the love of his life, he got what tricked. Tricked. Then uh, his the. the when his love had a child, died, died, she died, died. She and then next thing we know, Joseph is, in his mind, Joseph is what? Dead. 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 Mm-hmm. So he's like, man, I, I done been through it. I done, I done been through some hard times. But he categorized it as evil. And uh, before we jump down uh, Jacob's back and say, well, you should always not recognize it as evil, but see it as being blessed because God was with you. God always told you he was with you. Pump the brakes and think about yourself. How many times do you do we do this? All right, do we go down that road? Mm-hmm. Now, now I take this as a lesson. That this is where I want to get to. I want to get to where I don't. I don't really want to call what God is bringing me through as as evil. I'm just looking at it as God is bringing me through. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. All right. So when we go through difficult times, you know, when you 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 go through your taxes and you think, well, I'm gonna get X amount of money, and then you get nothing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you like, okay, this this don't seem like the right thing to do, and you, tax cap, all that stuff happens. But yet you got to recognize, so with all this happening, is God still with me? Yes. And that's the question you got to ask yourself. So then he's going to do something in another way. Mm-hmm. It's not going to come the way that I think. Because see, a lot of times, we, I like to be able to see how it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. I can see how it's going to unfold. Mm-hmm. So if I'm doing that, that means I'm walking by what? Sight. Sight. Mm-hmm. But the scripture tells me to do what? Walk by faith. Walk by, fi- by, by faith and not by, by sight. sight. Mm-hmm. Which is not something that we enjoy doing. You know why I, don't, I know we don't enjoy doing it? Because none of us want to do that. Anymore. We're not going to walk through this building and close our eyes. Mm-hmm. That's... The, and that's, that's not what God's asking you to do. But because we don't do that in the natural, we don't, we're not comfortable about doing that in the what? Spiritual. But we would be better off in the spiritual, closing our spiritual, uh, our, our eyes, and walking by the voice and by the, the, the leading of God than trying to figure it all out. Mm-hmm. It took me a while to learn that because before I want, I want to know exactly what God's doing. I want to understand. God, tell me, give me what's going on, and it's like, just trust me. You know, so, you know what that's like. You know when you got that long trip and you got your, your little one in the back seat. You know, are we there yet? Where we going? Where we are? How we look? Do you can you trust me? Because especially if you're going someplace that they want to get to, like Disney World, you know, and you driving from you, trust me, I will get you there. We will get there. Then you get to the hotel. I thought we were going to Disney World. Yeah, but we got to get to the hotel first. We got to do this. No, we got to go. When are we going to go see Mickey Mouse? Yeah. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> All that's going on. How often are we like that with God? God's taking us through the journey. We're in the back seat trying to tell God how to drive. All right. So he said, uh, few and evil are the days and the years of, uh, uh, of my life been and have not attain unto the days of the years of the life of my fathers and the days of their pilgrimage. And once again, Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from uh, before Pharaoh. And Joseph uh, placed his father and his brethren and gave them a possession of land in Egypt in the best of the land in the land of Ramesses. So now their residence was in Ramesses that they were working and and bringing their flock and being and shepherding in the land of what Goshen, mm-hmm. uh, as Pharaoh had commanded. And Jacob nourished his father and his brother. So Jacob took care of them because he was what he was second in command, right? So he made sure that his father and his brother had what they needed, and all his father's household with bread according to their family. So they they had plenty to eat. Verse thirteen. And there was no bread in all the land for the famine. So you see that jump from verse 12 to verse 13? Mm -hmm. Y'all notice that? Mm -hmm. First, I'm nourishing everybody with what? With bread. Bread. And then we go to verse 13. It's a whole new paragraph. And "And there was no bread. There was no bread. See, everybody's good when there's enough to go around. Mm -hmm. But let there be scarcity. And we don't have enough. Now all of a sudden, well, who, who's going to get the last piece here? Mm-hmm. And you got six, seven people. It ain't big enough to cut in six, seven pieces. What are we going to do? All right, that's when the issues start showing up. So there was no bread in all the land, and the famine was very sore, so that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine. And Joseph gathered up all the money. All right. So the first thing he did was, because remember, he built the what? The storehouse. Mm-hmm. All right? And so he's got all this. He's been storing this stuff up for seven years. Mm-hmm. And he knew just to make it as big as we could. So the first thing, if y'all, y'all need some bread, you got to do what? Pay. Bring me your Pay. money. Mm-hmm. So now Pharaoh is, is basically, you know, the Federal Reserve because he's con- federal. I mean, uh, Pharaoh is controlling the what? The money. Mm-hmm. All right, let's keep reading. Uh, so he said, gather up all the money that they found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the corn which uh, they bought. Uh, and Joseph brought uh, the money to who? To Pharaoh's house. Okay. The money went to who? Pharaoh. Pharaoh, is Pharaoh over what land? 
Egypt. Egypt. The, 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 where did the money go to? To the leader of Egypt. Mm -hmm. All right. Egypt is a type of what? Sin. Sin. Yeah. All right. That's and so. You ever hear that story? Follow the money. Mm -hmm. Money will always lead you to the to a person that's dealing in what? In sin. sin. Fifteen. And the money what? Fail. Ooh, look at that. So money can answer all things? No, because what happened? The money what? The money failed. It stopped. So the money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan. All the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, give us bread. Give me bread, but what? We ain't got no more what? We ain't got no more money. For why should we die in thy presence for the money failure? I don't, we don't have any money, but, so why should we still die? Okay. Well, let's see if Egypt... Now, keeping in mind, Joseph, even though he's the man of God, he's working in the administration of who? Pharaoh. 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 So Joseph, Joseph said, give your cattle, and I will give you uh, for your cattle uh, if the money failed. And they brought their cattle unto Joseph, and Joseph gave them what? Bread. So now... Give me your possessions, the things, your occupations, your jobs. I own your job now. You now work for what? Me. For me. Mm -hmm. Ain't that something? So I got your money, and now I got your labor. Mm -hmm. I, got your, I got your cattle. Not so much your labor, but I got your cattle. cattle. I own your buildings. I own your factories. You know, I own your shops. All right? I, I own that. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right? So now you, you're working for, for who? For working for me. All right? So in exchange... For the horses and for the flocks and for the cattle and of the herds and for the asses. And he fed them with bread for all the cattle that year. And that year was ended. It came upon him the second year. And he said unto him, we will not hide it from our Lord how our money is spent. My, our Lord hath our herds of cattle. Uh, there is not... Uh, there is uh, not aught left in the sight of our Lord but our what? Right. Bodies and our lands. So now they're at the point where they're willing to sell themselves into what? Slavery. Slavery. And I will now also give you my what? Land. My land. My residence where I stay belongs to you. And you go, wow, that's really bad. And that's I'm glad. where we're at. We pay property tax. I, you ahead of me, brother. I was just going to go there. I was going to try to paint it up a little pretty. But I was like, you think you own where you live at? No. Nope. And you nope. go, somebody might say, yeah, well, I don't own it, but I'm going to pay my mortgage up this year. Okay, yeah. go, okay. pay your mortgage. Pay, pay it off. Pay it off. Pay it off. Put, put new stuff on, paint, and do all that stuff. Do all that you can do. Stop and, and pay. And then don't pay taxes. And see who really owns your house. Your social security number is your number that you're a slave. That's it. That's it. So, so uh, yeah, we're already there. Because from a, a, a typological standpoint, metaphorically, we are living in the land of what? Egypt. So none of this we should want to own what? Anyway. And you got to keep in mind, Jacob knows I'm going to be here for my life. I'm going to die in Egypt. But I know that, I, that you are coming out of this. And when you come out of this, don't leave my what? My bones no, here. Yeah. Take my bones with you because we are coming out of this. Now, do we live in this land of, 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 of sin and in, in, in this place where we dwell? And we have to make things work. We got you know, to eat. You got you to gotta do what's going on here. Mm -hmm. We do what's, what's happening here. If you got money, you use it. If you got land, you use it. But remember, you're not here to stay. And that should be your ultimate uh, focus in reality. Well, we're doing pretty good. Okay. All right. At least I think we are. Because sometimes my clock is wrong. We're doing fine. All right. <laughs> we're doing great. All right. Um, verse, verse 19. Wherefore shall we die before thy eyes, both we and our land, by us and our land, for the bread and we... Uh, and, and we and our lands will be servant unto Pharaoh and give us seed that we may live and not die that the land may not be desolate. So they're already thinking because now they're starting to come down because remember now before they were saying give us what? Bread. Bread. Now they're saying give us what? Land. Uh, give us seed. 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 Okay. 
So they're recognizing that, and see, and here's the thing, they must believe in the dream that was interpreted by Pharaoh that was given to him by who? God. Mm -hmm. Because they're, they're counting and they're going, the seven years of famine must be coming to an end now. Mm -hmm. So if you give us, don't just give us bread, give us some what? Seed. Because we know that the following year is going to be good and we can actually plant. Mm -hmm. So, so they, they understand and they recognize that the prophecy was true. Mm -hmm. We had the seven years of plenty, seven years of famine, but the seven years of famine are coming to an end yeah. and we're going to have a time where we can actually take some seed and plant. Right. We can go back and do some work. But when we, the last time we were planting seed, we were planting seed for the cattle that we own and the land that we own working for ourselves. Now when we get ready to plant the seed, we're going to be planting the seed and the land is owned by who? By Pharaoh. To feed the cattle that are owned by Pharaoh. And our, our work is being taxed by who? Pharaoh. Only 20% right there? Yeah. I know. Yeah. I'll take that. Well, let's, let's see here. Gabe is already ahead of us. Let's, let's look at that. <laughs> so give us seed that we may live and not die in the land, not be desolate. And Pharaoh bought all the land of Egypt. I was just saying, Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. And the Egyptians sold every man his field because the famine prevailed over them. So the land became pharaohs as for the people he removed them to to cities for for one end uh, of the border of Egypt even unto the other end so he kind of situated since I own you I can tell you where to what live. where to live I can build a project over here you guys move into that project I can build another one over here you guys move into that and I can then begin to orchestrate and control it the way what I want to control it Sounds familiar? Mm -hmm. We don't do that today. We don't build projects and put certain people in them, do we? Yes, they do. Oh. <laughs> yes, they do. Mm. Mm -hmm. Nothing new. You're absolutely right. 22. Only the land of the priests. So if I got, I got the priests, so the people that I want to consider spiritual, but these are the people that Egypt considers spiritual, mm -hmm. I won't tax them. Oh, let me see. What is that? See, do we tax religious folks today? No. Oh. 501c3. Oh, they don't get taxed, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, they tax. They do tax the ones that are 501c3. Exactly. So if you don't want to be hooked into that, which we are not, by the way. I, I decided that's not something that we want to be involved in. Which we are not, by the way. I decided that's not something that we want to be involved in. Because then they get to tell you what to what? What mm -hmm. to talk about? To marry some dudes up in here. And all, mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Uh, so uh, <laughs> only the land of the priests brought he not for the priests had a portion assigned to them of Pharaoh right? keeping in mind that they didn't get taxed but they still were told what to do by who? Pharaoh, Pharaoh. and uh, and did eat of the portion w w uh, which Pharaoh gave unto them so I'm going to tell y'all what to do priests because I'm going to give you land and I'm also going to give you what? Some food. So make sure you got what you need. Wherefore they sold not their land. Right? So the priests are like, yeah, what, what famine? <laughs> I'm living good. Okay, you having a tough time, you know, paying for that for your airplane flight, flight to go see your family. Then I ain't got that tough time because I own a jet. I own my own plane. You know, I own my own stuff. You know, we see that on TV, don't we? Then, then uh, Joseph said unto the people, Behold, I have bought you this day and your land for Pharaoh. Lo, here is, this, here is seed for you. He's given them the seed so they can go what? Work. Right. And ye shall sow the land, and it shall come to pass that the increase, that means when you get your, 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 your crop, when your harvest comes, ye shall give a fifth part unto Pharaoh. And a fourth uh, part shall be yours, your own, uh, for the seed to, to, to throw back into your field, for food, uh, for your household, and for food for your little ones. So, now, you're going to go plant, and we're going to divide everything that you get 
in five parts. That's what? What percentage is that? 20 percent. Mm -hmm. So you get to keep 80 and we and, and you got to give us 20. Now some uh, uh, Gabe said that ain't that ain't too bad because we are way over 20 percent here. Okay. Oh, yeah. Now you think about this. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, I, I need something to illustrate this. We had about 70%. You want a piece of paper? Yeah. Let's see if I got something here. 70% child support in New York State is 23%. <laughs> well, I mean, they tax you and they pay you. But then when you go buy something, you pay tax. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They tax you it's twice. That. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh, I got two pieces. I got a nice piece for you, bro. Yeah. 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 Okay. I got one. I got one. Oh. Oh. Nice big piece. Oh, okay, good. Thank you. Now. I want you to take a look at this paper. This this represents your your income. This is your this is what you make. Okay, this is how much money you make. All right, you can say in a year, in a month, I don't matter. This is this is your income. So, uh, when you get paid, the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to pay some federal tax. All right, that's the that's the national government, right? So they're going to come in. I'm probably being generous here. Yeah. yeah. They're gonna come yeah, in. Are. I'm being generous, right? But look at that. This is this is and so that goes to them. Now, this is this is the government. Okay. Then you got your state, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that goes to it's a different kind of government, but it's still what? A government. Still government. Mm -hmm. Then you got Social Security. Mm -hmm. right, now this is supposed to be to take care of you. We are doing this for your benefit. Mm -hmm. And you know that the government, all they care about is your, your well-being, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. right? So they're going to come and take Social Security. And once again, I'm probably being generous here. It's probably a bigger, right? Actually, no, that's about right. Think that? Okay. So, but now, wait a minute. Who run, who's run Social Security? The who's the oh, so it still goes to government. The federal government. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Then we got this new thing called you got to have health care, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we well, gotta make that bigger. Huh? We gotta make that bigger. <laughs> you gotta have health care. All right, now who, who's running that now? Oh, oh, that goes back over here too? Oh my goodness. Yes. Ain't that There's something? A piece of paper you gotta okay. Got where you now, take it out. What am, I, what am I overlooking? Overlooking Okay. You forget that if you wanna. If you got a job, pretty much almost any job, they tell you that you need to open up. They used to have pensions. Now they have a what? 401k. Now, 401k is supposed to be the money that you put aside. It's for who? You. It's for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to take that 401k, and you're going to put that away aside. Now, they're telling you it's for you, and they say this will go to who? You. You. No, who runs this? Who, who the stock market. market. The, the stock market. market. The stock market. And who, who's part of the stock market? The big, bankers. Big, big, big banking, bankers. corporations. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't go to them. You know, that goes to, to, to these guys here, right? Special investors. Right? But now, the reason why I put this on something high, you see how this is fluctuating like that? <laughs> you see that? Mm -hmm. you, you see that right there? Mm -hmm. Because that's what that does. And then you get somebody like Bernie Madoff that will mm -hmm. come in and he, he'll do something and do a bad investment. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. even though this is yours, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, this, and that just disappeared. We have no idea where that went. And now that's all you got left. Mm -hmm. So that's what you got to live on. Mm -hmm. Now, you got to take this. You got to put your kids through college. You got to pay for your car. You got to pay your mortgage. Mm -hmm. food. You got to get food. You got to buy clothes. Mm -hmm. Any kind of entertainment. Sales tax. <laughs> sales tax. Sales, oh, oh. sales tax. tax. <laughs> and we put that over here. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, even though gasoline, you got you got you got the medical, right? Mm -hmm. That they already took out. But then you got co payments. Yeah. Co payments. You got dental stuff. Mm -hmm. So when it's all said and done, you are just ripped to shreds. <laughs> <laughs> And this is all that's left of you. <laughs> this is all you got from all the labor that you do. 40 hours, 50 hours, whatever it is that you do. You know, this is all you have that's it. to do anything that you might want to do. Look at what happened. So when, you, when, when Jesus talks about um, caring for the poor, mm -hmm. 
Do you think this cares for the poor? No. no. Now, I wish I had another sheet of paper. G give, me, give me another sheet of paper. I want to show you something. And then we're going we're gonna to be done because we're almost done with this first year. I want to show you what happens. Anybody here know who Jeff Bezos is? Who is Jeff Bezos? He is the, he is the, the founder and the, the president and CEO of Amazon. Amazon, yeah. Uh, I don't know how much you make a year. But last year, Amazon made one trillion dollars. Let me, let me correct myself. Made more than one trillion dollars. Right. Okay. Now, if you, you, you heard of things called tax brackets, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So if you, in a small tax bracket, you're supposed to be taxed like this. Mm -hmm. The more money you make, you get taxed a little bit more. Right. You know. So Amazon in one trillion dollar tax bracket. Okay, let me let me show you how much tax they pay. Let me let me see where, where can I rip this at? Yeah. Right here. Paper out. Yeah. Right there. They pay nothing. nothing. Zero in taxes. Mm. Tax. Now, how much could the government get from Amazon? Nothing. If they were to tax them. If they were to, if they were to tax them. Versus all of us put together. They 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 could run all kinds of programs. Mm. Run all kinds. But what happens is they don't get taxed at all. They don't get taxed, not, not a cent. Then, you get what happened, and I ain't trying to pick on them, I'm just telling the truth. Um, I'm trying to remember what, uh, what, what, what corporation it was. It's in the, I can almost see, I can see the news article. But it was a plant in Indiana that was going to move the whole plant to Mexico. Mm -hmm. And Trump came in and said, I'm not going to allow them to move this, this plant to Mexico. We're going to rebuild this plant and we're going to put several, you know, we're going to put money back in it. And then Trump turned to the guy and said, how much money do you think you need to rebuild this factory to make it state of the art? And he said something like $70 million. And Trump said, I'm not giving you $70 million. I'm going to give you $100 million. And we're going to let you build this factory up. And you know what happened? They did it. Mm. They took that factory in Indiana. Mm -hmm. They uh, 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 revitalized it. They bought uh, 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 all new stuff and, and automation into that factory. And those uh, promises that Trump said that we're going to make sure that this factory doesn't leave, we're going to keep these jobs here, mm -hmm. he did it. But let's take a closer look. When the factory was running before all the in, uh, updates, no there were and I forget the numbers, let me just pull a number out thin air just to kind of make the point. Let's just say 20, uh, uh, 10,000 workers. All right? So you got 10,000 workers working there. Now with the automation, if you go in there, and if you were to go in there before the automation, you were walking in and you see people all over the factory, all different places, just people doing stuff. You walk in there today, you see robots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Every person that was in there before was a person that worked, also paid taxes. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the employer had to do like some tax matching and different things and benefits that they had to give to that employee. Mm -hmm. So you look at every one of those employees, that corporation had to give that employee benefits and stuff like that that they were taxed for. You walk in there now, those robots, how, many, how much did that employer have to pay for benefits for the robot? None. He don't get no. He don't get no retirement fund. He don't get no four hundred one k. He don't get. He don't got to take out sale, a, a, a state and city taxes for that person, because not a person. No. So the factory stayed, like they said. The automation happened, like they said. But did they actually truly save the jobs? No. 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 Because no. the jobs are still gone. Because the jobs have been replaced. Save your job. And the, that corporation now is paying. Way less in tax and benefits and all this other stuff than it was paying before. Making more money, putting out more goods, paying less taxes, and that's automation for you. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're going. It's coming. That's where we, we're headed. So when you look and you read this about Pharaoh, don't think that we, we are too far from that. We're kind of right there. We're in the midst of that, this change and this... this uh, 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 Switch from like you know so how we went to that one line where they gave them bread in verse twelve, and then we went to verse thirteen. It was like there was no bread. Mm -hmm. It's like that. 
we had we got jobs, and then all of a sudden there was no jobs. Yeah. But wait a minute. That's but the but the corporations are still doing good. I mean, Amazon is they're doing wonderful. Walmart is doing wonderful. All these big corporations. They don't have to. They make rules. So, like, if you have a small business, well, you have to hire this and you have to, you have to hire. pay for this. Mm -hmm. But like, Walmart doesn't have to provide that stuff. They get special treatment. Well, once again, because there is a, a incentive, because they are all together. That's a that's their, that's that's a that's an earthly holy trinity there, you know. And so, when, even when you read in the Book of Revelation, it says the kings. And the merchants of the land were uh, went to go hide themselves. Right? So they, they, they knew that the kings and the rulers and the powerful men and the merchants and the, and, the, and the businessmen, they were all together. And they're doing all that stuff with that. And, and, and this is all you got. But don't get discouraged. You know why? Because you are in God. As long as... I don't care... You could you could you could just have this. They could, they could take all that, and you could just have that. But if you in God, guess what? You're more powerful than they are. You're good. Mm -hmm. Greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. And that's the faith that we got to try to hold on to. Now, is it easy to do that? Because it's it's difficult. It's frustrating when you walk around like this and you look over there and look at all your stuff over there amongst all them. I, I, I work, I'm trying to take care of and do what I'm supposed to do and when it's all said and done, I was given this dream Now they told me that some of this is supposed to come back to me, and for some people it does work some people they, they, they retire and do well, but not everybody so what you got to build your confidence in is that I'm in God that's, that's, my, that's my social security that's my 401k, now if I get all that, then fine, if God works it out that I get it, then I'm not going to, you know, fine. But that's where I got to put my trust in. I got to put my trust in that. And, and learn not to put our trust in material things. Uh, believe that God will, will carry us through. Amen. And that that's an exercise in relationship. That's why I constantly, and I can't say it enough, you need to get to know God for yourself. You got to know him for yourself. Because when tough times come, Sure, you can call people and ask people, but when it's all said and done, your spirit needs to be what? Agreeing with what God is saying. Mm -hmm. So you got to pray. You got to talk to God. You got to seek Him. You got to do that. Because you never know when your tough day going to come. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. you know you, today was, I'm doing it. I woke up next day and boom, now I'm dealing with this. Didn't expect it, didn't plan for it, didn't even know it was coming. But here it is. Mm -hmm. But do you got God? Mm -hmm. And if you got God, you can move on. All right. So Joseph and them, they took a fifth part, uh, and we talked about you know how and then and Gabe pointed out, yeah, that, that that's it's even worse today. And Israel dwelt in the land of of, of 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 Egypt, in the country of Goshen, and they had possessions therein and grew, and multiplied exceedingly. So in the midst of difficulty, they're still doing what? Multiply. They're multiplying. Mm -hmm. God's growing you. All right. And you say, well, what do you mean? Your faith. Your faith. Your confidence in Him. Mm -hmm. Your resilient uh, spirit to be able to deal with difficult and tough times. All right. Uh, look at all that you've been through. Everything you've been through. Guess what? So far, you've been able to what? Hurdle it. Yeah, but you don't know what I got to go to tomorrow. Well, okay. Let's see if you're here the day after tomorrow. I think you will be. You're going to be able to what? To hurdle it. All right? So you got to keep that in mind. God's going to bring you through. Jacob lived in the land of Egypt for 17 uh, years. Uh, so the whole age of Jacob was 140 and 7 years. And the time drew nigh for I uh, Israel to die. And I like the way they did that. They talked about how old Jacob was and gave his years. But then when it said it's time for him to die, they called him what? Israel. Israel. So, so he lived that many years as a natural man, but he's dying a spiritual man. Mm. See, he's dying. He, he lived as Jacob, but he's dying as Israel. Mm -hmm. And he called his son Joseph and said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh and deal kindly uh, with me. 
And that was a tradition that they had, put the hand under the thigh. I won't deal on that. I'll deal on that a little bit later. Uh, but when you, it's a, it's, it was a cultural thing um, where they said, well, I want you to, to, to promise me by all the, uh, uh, the lineage that you will have going forward that you will do this for me. So it wasn't so much the thigh, it was someplace else, but we won't, we won't dwell on that. Bury me not, I pray thee, in what? In Egypt. Mm -hmm. right. Don't leave me here. Uh, but uh, I will uh, lie with my fathers, and thou shalt carry me out of Egypt. God's going to bring us out of this world. Mm -hmm. right. And bury me there, uh, uh, in their burying place. And he said, I will do as thou hast said. And he, and he said, swear unto me. And he swore unto him. And Israel bowed himself on uh, his bed's head. All right. So um, he made this one last thing. And, he, and if you think of this, this is actually a prophecy. Because Jacob is telling Joseph, we're going to leave here. You're not going to be here that long. I mean, you, well, I'm not saying that long. You're not going to be here forever. Okay. They're going to they're gonna be there for a little bit of time, but you're not going to be here forever. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> very, uh, you know, accurately, we can say to each one of us, okay, how young you are, how old you are, you ain't going to be here what? Forever. forever. And then you, you got an eternal place. And eternity is something that's different than time. Some people say, well, what, how long is eternity? You can't use the word how long with eternity. It's different because it's not time. Right. All right? It's something totally, totally different than time. All right. So we're going to stop there. Um, Lord willing, uh, next week we'll, we'll pick up and we probably may get 48 and 49 together. We even may finish it depending on how well we go. But, uh, and then, uh, but just keep in mind, we're getting ready to go into the book of Exodus. And that's going to be... Uh, you, you talk about mirroring our current world in the book of Exodus you're going to see this as like wow this is exactly what we're going through but you already see that now as we go through uh, the ending part of Genesis any other comments or questions so we thank God for Calvin and I'm yeah. sorry what's your Gina. name Gina, Gina. yeah and um, yeah yeah so we're certainly certainly glad to have you guys here and uh, we're, we're happy to hear your good news sir we're very very happy we've been, been praying for you been calling your name and uh, god is blessing you that's it that's it all right so with that being all who's gonna send us home come on brother. dear heavenly father we come to you today lord saying thank you lord lord we thank you for the young people that are in our midst father we thank you for the children lord because you said in your words suffer not the little children come unto you and forbid them not Father, we thank you for them. Father, we thank you for each and every one that's here. Father, we thank you for the prayer box, Lord. We thank you for answering prayer. Lord. Yes. Lord, we thank you for giving us a mind to continue to pray over the prayer box each and every day. Father, we pray that you continue to give us the spirit and the courage, Lord, and the um, unction to keep on moving forward for you, Lord. Lord, because it is all about you. It's yes. not about any one yes. of us in here, but it's about you. Father, you created us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, let your spirit rest on each and every one of us here, Father. Father, touch our bodies today, Lord. Touch our minds today, Lord. Open up our hearts today, Lord, yes. that we may receive more of you, Lord. That we would want more of you, Lord. That we will thirst for you, Lord, because you said if we thirst for righteousness, we shall be filled. Yes. Father, we pray as we get ready to leave this place, but never your presence. Father, that you bless each and every one that's here. Bless their homes, Lord. Bless those that are in new homes. Father, we pray for that bereaved family today in Austin, Lord. Mm -hmm. We pray for the Chirac family today, Lord, that you touch that family, that you ease the pain, Lord, that only you can do. Father, and as we leave this place, but never your presence in your love. And in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone say amen. 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 Thank you, sir. <clears throat>